Senator, the reason I wanted to have you on is because you really have become the face of the new right and possibly a vision of what the GOP could look like within the decades to come. That's kind of the frame I'd like to bring to this conversation. So let's begin with Google. You were the first attorney general in the country to open an investigation into the search giant. Now 48 of, of your former compatriots have joined your lead. The DOJ is also in leading investigation into these companies. What is the ideal end state for that investigation in your view? Well, I mean, the ideal end state is to get the facts, first of all. And this is something that Google has resisted. I mean, look, I can tell you, when, as Attorney General of Missouri, I mean, first of all, when we tried to get other states to partner with us, when I launched an antitrust investigation, this has been two years ago now, I couldn't get a single state to come on board. So now to have almost all 50 is absolutely outstanding. I mean, this is great, great progress. I think it shows what happens if you're willing to take a stand. But Google resisted us at every turn. You know, their public uh, statement was, their public official line was, oh, we're cooperating fully. But cooperating fully meant resisting every document request. And it's uh, maintaining at first that uh, they weren't even subject to Missouri's laws. This was their first salvo. It meant hiring you know, every attorney that they could find. Uh, to try and stall us and delay. And that's exactly what they're going to do to the state attorneys general. That's exactly what they've been doing to the United States Congress. I mean, I've sat in committee hearings and listened to them tell, if not outright falsehoods, deliberately misleading mm. testimony. Which falsehoods and uh, Well, think, talk about, think about for a second their Android phone. I mean, listening to a Google exec tell me that the Android phone doesn't actually track users when they have location services turned off. But it turns out it does. I said, well, wait a minute, if you turn off the Wi-Fi, does it still scan for other Wi-Fi? Yes, it does. Does it still send reports to Google? Yes, it does. Can you stop that? No, you can't. But of course, he initially said quite the opposite. So all that to say that getting the facts about what Google is doing is, would be a tremendous, tremendous plus. Yeah. And then, look, we've, we've got to stop their anti-competitive behavior. I mean, Google is engaging with a pattern of what looks to be anti-competitive conduct. We need competition in that market. We need consumers actually to have their interests looked after, not just these monopolists. So the criticism of that would be, nobody wants to use the second or the third or the fourth worst search engine. So how, what does competition within search actually look like, well, especially with targeted advertising? Yeah, well, yeah. well this is a big problem. And mm. the targeted advertising also leads to, to rampant privacy violations. And this is something else I think we need to talk about, is what Google is doing violating its users' privacy. But in terms of competition, I mean, let, let's open up the market to allow new market entrance to have a chance to develop a better product. I mean, we don't know what a better product would look like because Google is stifling competition. Well, speaking of that, so breaking news, the Wall Street Journal is saying that Amazon has been altering its search results to prefer its own products or its own products over an actual competitive marketplace at the objection of its own lawyers who are raising antitrust concerns. Does this sound like something that you think also needs investigation? Will you be looking into this personally and, and sending some inquiries? I, I think it is. Yeah. I think it is very troubling. I think it does merit investigation. Absolutely. And what, what we're seeing is a really troubling pattern here that these monopoly sized entities, Google, Facebook, Amazon, are using their tremendous market power to favor their own businesses, favor their own products, and disfavor competitors. Well, who loses in that are the American people at the end of the day, as well as our privacy, as well as our children. So this is why we need to hold them accountable. So in a recent Wired interview you did, you said that uh, from Silicon Valley, it has given us some of the worst of America. You specifically create, uh, criticized the creation of billionaire wealth at the expense of others, and you called it the Uber economy. Why do you think the gig economy is bad for American workers? It's a significant change in rhetoric that we saw from the Rep Republican Party in the early days of Uber. Well, you know, I think, look at the track record that Silicon Valley has given us, and I've referred to, in particular, social media. Yeah. I mean, social media, the pathologies associated with social media in the last decade or so, I mean, the, the data that comes to us about the correlation between social media usage and teenage suicide and teenage depression and teenage loneliness. Now, look, we need more information. It's still early days, but what we're seeing so far is very, very worrisome. And we know what the business model is of these giant social media companies, Google, again, and Facebook. The business model is to get us to spend as much time online as possible, to take as much information from us as they can without telling us, and then sell it without our consent or otherwise profit from it. That whole business model is based on exploitation of consumers, of families, of individuals, of children in many cases. That's something that we ought to be concerned about that we need to stop. Well, I, I want to return also to the gig economy, like you said, because I thought the Uber economy was a very important phrase that you used there. Is it exploitative of workers in order to participate in the Google, in, to, in order to create gig economy businesses. Yeah, my concern is, yeah. is that what we're seeing with Silicon Valley is they're creating jobs, but they're creating jobs in China. I mean, where are they prioritizing their investment overseas? You know, I mean, look, look at Google. Google has worked overtime to try and open business ventures in China. 
including being willing to launch a, a platform search engines that censor uh, according to Chinese communist government standards just so that they can rake in the bucks. Where's everything produced that Apple, for instance, makes? China. So I'm concerned that we're, they're building an economy in which American workers don't have anything to do. American workers don't benefit. Uber, I, I mentioned the Uber economy because Uber drivers get paid cents on the dollar in order to drive. So who benefits from that? Well, Uber executives, they get rich, just like Google executives are rich and Amazon executives are rich, Facebook. But what about everyday American workers? What's their place? in this economy, it's a problem. Do you think gig, gig economy jobs make America a better or a worse place? I mean, it, yeah. it just depends. Um, yeah. uh, they should be making America better, and this is my challenge to these companies. My challenge is if they want to be leaders, you know, they say they represent the best of America. Well, that's true. Create jobs in this country. If that's true, invest in the middle of our society, in the middle of the country, but in the American middle, the middle class. Invest here, produce things here, create jobs and opportunities for our families, increase productivity. They haven't been doing any of that. So you spoke about China earlier. Does Silicon Valley have a national security problem with China? Yeah, I mean, clearly. Clearly they do. And so what should they be allowed to do business whatsoever with China? Well, look, I've, I've advocated legislation that would place a number of technologies on what's called the export control list. Everything that China says that they are targeting, that China is targeting to try and steal, basically. We know that China has stolen so much of American technology. I mean, they've tried to build their middle class on the backs of our middle class. They've tried to build their military on the backs of our middle class, which is even worse. And Silicon Valley has just gone along with it. So it's time to put Silicon Valley to a choice, which is that you can either support the repressive authoritarian regime in China, or you can support the American middle class. But increasingly, you can't have it both ways. More of my interview with Senator Hawley next. <laughs>